What is up guys, Charles from Team COG, coming at you guys here with a uh, OTS Championship report and an updated Crusadia deck profile. So guys, me and my teammates, we went down to uh, Lakewood, Colorado, suburb of Denver, and played in their OTS Championship. It was a 40-man tournament, uh, 40 man tournament, six rounds of Swiss, and broke in the top eight. So sadly, I went 3-3, uh, three, three, finishing at 19th place. It was a really, really fun event. I did not make it to the top, and I like, I, I have my tallies, I have everything to explain to you guys my matchups, why I lost the matchups, and how they went. And um, other than that, guys, like the trip was fun. The trip was a blast. We had to woke up, woke up at four in the morning to get there. Actually, we woke up late. But anyway, um, I got nineteenth. Uh, Caleb, who played Cyber Dragons, followed with eighteenth, and then Ryan, who played Mech Knight Invoked, followed with seventeenth. And then our man Gus, who played Alter Guys, bubbled with at tenth place. He should have got up there, but he bubbled in the. He bubbled, so we got 10th, and then it was top 8 that got their invites. So, guys, without further ado, I'm going to jump into my matchups, and I got them right here for you. So, uh, round 1 was Zombies. That was a 2-0. That was pretty pretty easy. Uh, round 2 was Trick Stars. Now, this match, I got 2-0 I got there. Uh, round 1, I had the full hand was so complete and everything like that, just to go off and pretty much make it to where she couldn't play. I do to, it is a she, and she's a very good player in the Denver area, so if she does watch this video and you know your name, I can't remember your name, I'm sorry, and you remember playing me, you're really good. So um, anyway, guys, uh, Drone Lockbird, uh, Drone Lockbird just kills this deck right off the match. Uh, we can play through, and throughout the day, throughout all these matches, guys, I played through multiple hand traps such as Impermanence and Ash Blossoms, and essentially, guys, like, Droll is what kills this deck. So bad that you can't essentially play through it. However, though, when she drilled me game one, I was able to put up an equal max with a Cyverse Quant or say a Cyverse Quantum Dragon, which is really good. Uh, last minute change was this adding in the Cyverse Quantum Gra Dragon. Do not regret it. Uh, round three was Cyber Dragon. So this was actually Kayla, the guy I rode with. And don't you just love driving three hours or four hours or even longer than that just to play someone you came up with? It, it was irritating. We both were pretty upset with it. Uh, game one. I opened the nuts. He couldn't play. Game two, if I remember right, we were... Game two. No, game two. Let's see. How was it? Game two. He lost, so he made me go first. And I I had the game. I just had to use uh, Sarah Yuja to summon my World Legacy World Crown via Sarah Skuldred's effect. And I would have had enough to kill for game. But instead, I hastily summoned it by its own effect in defense position. And by that, I left him with, I think, 400, no, 600 life points left. And so you know how Cyber Dragons are. And uh, not to mention, guys, that turn, I red rebooted a, uh, what, I red, red, red rebooted a evenly match. So I knew at the end of my battle phase it was coming. So I knew I had what it took to kill him in my hand. I just messed up and played wrong. So he got it. Not taken away from him. Game three, it was just a, uh, it was, he, we both, he knew how I was going to side, and he knew how I was going to side. So he knew that I was going to make him go first, and I was going to side in my going second side. But to, also, guys, my side deck here, I don't know where, it wasn't there during the tournament, guys. Like, it never showed up once. I think throughout the entire tournament, I, I actually, I know, I only saw three cards throughout the entire term of my side deck. And guys, I sided in eight to nine cards almost every game, and I still saw less, so odds were not in my favor. Uh, round four was Cosmo. He was, uh, don't know if you guys know him, his name is Johnny Nagel. He is probably, in my opinion, one of the one of the top players from the Denver area. I end up two one him. He played Cosmo Artifact, Artifact Demise in game one. He flipped over that Sanctum, couldn't recover. Game two, I went first, and even with a really bad hand, I was able to put on an equal max with a Crystal Wing, and I just couldn't negate two cards. And he tried to play through it, but it was just it was just too much for him. He opened seemed like he didn't open enough um, Cosmo cards, just mostly artifacts. Uh, game three, though, game three was pretty awesome. He ended up, I went first because that's what he wanted. Um, no, excuse me. He went first because that's what he wanted. I normal summoned my Maximus. He flipped Scythe. That was all she wrote for that turn. Now, the next turn, I gave him my uh, Kaiju. And I was like, well, dang, now I have to clear it. I couldn't clear the Kaiju because Scythe came back. And then I passed to him. And I was getting real low on life points. And he decided to overlay into uh, Pallades and keep my Kaiju. And I had two cards in my hand to go off. And I was like, come on, man. Let me... My deck had just been crapping on me a lot today. So I was like, come on, let me top deck. Let me top deck one card. Like, I, just, I need a slumber. That's what I need. I top decked a slumber, and I ended up to win. He didn't knew, He did not know how the Crusadia side functioned, so I had enough combo pieces to extend into a uh, equal max and just one punch. And he's like, really, that's how that works? And he's like, I was like, yeah, that's how it works. Uh, 12,000 damage, 
win really good. Uh, round five was Salomon Greats. Uh, I went won the dice roll. I went first, opened the nuts. Game two, he opened subpar. He just happened to open a strike, and he uh, striked my special summon, which essentially if you strike or saw him, this deck's normal summon, it's pretty much just as equally as done. And then he just continued to win. Uh, game three, shit, I mean, I'm not going to cuss for the kids if any children watch this. I 100% serious, guys. I drew two Call by the Graves, Terraforming, and a Succession, and a uh, Guard Dragon, and I just drew into spells for the rest of the turn. So he he beat me with Sun Sunlight Wolf. That that was how that game went. He beat me with Sunlight Wolf. Uh, round six was BA Danger, and this right here, this pretty much proved to me why I wanted to play Crystal Wing because I kept I was able to negate the effects out of hand. And uh, round one, I just opened the nuts. He couldn't do anything. Round two, he actually just special summoned Farfa attributed for Vanity's Fiend. I could not get to my impermanence. By the time I drew into my impermanence, he already had a second uh, Vanity's Fiend established. So it was GG. Uh, game two, I went first, opened the nuts. He couldn't play. So uh, actually, let's see here. I opened the nuts. He was able to play through it. He linked a bunch of monsters into Boral Sword. And I was playing. Uh, I was playing Quantum Dragon. He attacked Quantum Dragon, and Quantum Dragon just bounced back the Boral Sword, so it was GG. So guys, right now, we're just going to jump into the deck profile, because I took long enough to explain the matches, and just go into it. So there have been some pretty big changes from my first profile that I brought you guys. I've been testing this deck a lot, so I'll explain to you guys the changes and explain to you my choices. Remember guys, this, I'm not telling you you have to play my version to be the best version. I'm telling you guys use my version as a blueprint if you have it, if you if you will. And uh, I just play the deck the way I want to, and that's my advice for everyone out there. Don't let anyone tell you you have to play a certain card. Play what you want. So jumping into the uh, three Maximus. So a lot of Crusadia uh, Guard Dragon players out there who clearly have picked up the deck just because the Guard Dragons came out and don't know the days of when you'd one punch for 16,000 damage. Don't understand how good this guy is, especially if you do play the equal max, because it just allows you to facilitate one punches. Uh, he's also my favorite card. I will always see this in every video. So... Favorite card, you must max out on three of him. Uh, three Arborea. Arborea is really good too. She is your tuner and protection. Return the two dragon lords in the graveyard. She, they're awesome. Uh, in my opinion, these first three are the most important three. So finally, for the most, I'd say the key piece to the entire strategy is a Draco. Draco recurs from grave. He's also a level four dragon that allows you to make your uh, guard dragon plays. Uh, three Leonis. Uh, essentially, Leonis is in here for her names, along with three Reclusia. I always used to play two Reclusia, but I started noticing, guys, like a lot of my matches that were lost and that I like were, was losing was because I didn't open enough combo extenders. So I decided to bite the bullet and throw in a Reclusia. And also the simple fact that uh, Salomon Greats, the Salad Boys, they end on that Sunlight Wolf giving me a zone. So essentially I special this to that zone and bait the back row. So I was three behind it, um, and it worked out fine. However, like the, the uh, how do I, <laughs> the idea, the, the, uh, excuse my stuttering, guys. The amount of times that this deck will open no monsters is phenomenal to me. You could play almost, I bet you 20 bucks, you could play three spells and somehow still open all spells. It makes no sense to me. The probability of you opening no monsters or two crusades, or not opening two crusades is so small and luck just, or bad luck shines on me, so that happened to me a lot. Um, so then we played two crowns. Crown is good because Crown is, allows you to make a, uh, he's a form of negation, he's a pseudo crusadia monster, so essentially any of these guys plus a crown, you have the combo. And then if you draw into Crown off of Sarah Eugen, it's like your hands there. Man, you just can summon this in as a form of negation. So that's it for the Crusadia side, guys. We play like pretty much the full Crusadia package. Moving on. Now, um, a change I would probably make in this lineup is maybe cut a Crown. I'm not 100% sure yet because I do like Crown. I don't think Crown's good at one. I think Crown's better at two. Because, like I said, for the simple fact that it is a form of negation that you can end on. But uh, moving on, we're going to go into the Dragon side. We're still playing three boys and one white guy. Uh, so I wasn't going to get these guys hollow until I really found out if I liked the engine. I love the engine, so I'm probably going to get them super, so stay tuned for that shiny update. I still decided to play this ratio. I know it's people playing this. A lot of times today, guys, like I would open this guy and he was dead. Um, unless you open the Maximus, unless you open Maximus going first, and like if you have to open, like this guy, how do I put it, like... You have to open Maximus going first. Like if it's you have any Crusadia plus this guy, you have to open Maximus in order to get this guy off. This guy's a little bit different, I think, because you have you have the crown and you play. Oh no, maybe I'm 
Oh, and Destrudos and just stuff like that. Uh, essentially, you go. <laughs> he's just he's kind of a brick. Not gonna lie, you have to work for him. Where this guy flows more fluidly because the Link monsters are lights. But this lineup, I would not add. I would not add another one of these. I definitely, definitely would not. I do not like seeing this guy in my hand, and he floated there all day along with um, his brother or his father. I'd say it. Red Eyes. This card was in my hand almost every game. Every game that I uh, won, it's because Red Eyes was in my hand. I hate summoning. It's it's a good thing they summon from the hand. That's all I gotta say. But Red Eyes, he allows you to facilitate your Sarajuja plays. And then for the two Distrudo. So Distrudo, I had decided to bump up. I needed wanted to play at two. I didn't want to play at three because they are a lot of times that Distrudo will clog, and that stinks. That really does. But I really wanted to make Boral Savage Dragon. And then I started to notice that you can essentially make the guard dragons with this guy by targeting a level 4 or level 3 monster you control and summoning it. So in a way, it's an extender to get to your dragon side. Because let me tell you guys, like if you do not draw into or open a dragon extender past your first Sarayuja, your board is going to be very lackluster. So he lets you have that. He's also, wait, like there's some crazy, like you can use this guy to make... Uh, Savage Dragon, then you can use a 4 and like a 3, a Bori, if you target a Bori with this guy to make Quantum Dragon. It's really good, guys. I, It's pretty solid. Now, uh, the one card I was very iffy about was Goliath. So, my thoughts behind not wanting to play this guy was because if you see him going first and you, you know, like, he's, he does nothing. He has no way. He's not like these dragons at all. Heck, even Red Eyes Flare, you can um summon out going first. Like, even if you brick, you can banish the Draco to summon this guy out. I did not I was fearful of bricking on this guy, and I didn't brick on him once. And then um, one time today, I had to summon him out using uh, Elipi from the from the deck because my hand was that bad. I'd had no way to continue on for a Sarayuja. They had called by the grave my Draco, so I just summoned this guy out and set on him, and it it worked. And then you know, like it, he, he it's um, the re other reason I didn't want to play with him is because I didn't want to become have the conflict of summoning these two. A lot of you guys out there have been saying I've been messing up with Sarah Yuja, and that is correct. That is actually very correct. I need to special a card from my hand first, then go to the Guard Dragon plays. You guys are right there. However, a lot of people are like, why didn't he special something off the Sarah Yuja once he made his links? You can't unless you have a dragon. And uh, he's a good dragon to summon off it. But both these guys, in my opinion, are like board enders. So like you finish your board with them and you win. So the, all the games that I won, it usually ended on one of these two guys. And there was, I think, two or three games where I just ended on just the minimum in the gate, and it was just enough. But, yeah, so one game is still also, guys. you got to play the Sea Turtle because it gives you unlimited negates. And uh, that is why I chose not to play Rescue Cat because I felt that Rescue Cat is a good extender. But at the same point, what are you doing with the extensions that you cannot already do with the Sarayuja draws? And then my other thought process was, oh, wait a minute. I remember the days when people said... We don't play Cat in the pure version because we don't want it to get ashed. Well, if it's the only card you open up with and you get ashed, you're in the same boat. High risk, high return for spell negations, which I feel is good, but not as good as this guy. He's safer if you get to him, and he negates everything. He's an omni-negate. He negates everything, whereas not just spell. So I felt, I felt that the Kyoto Waterfront package and Gamma Sil was better than the Rescue Cat Engine. And like I'm not, I'm not going to go into an entire uh, spiel or thing on why I think Rescue Cat's better. If you guys want to, if you guys want to discuss it, hit the Discord up and we'll talk about it. And I'll explain to you more in detail why I don't think Rescue Cat is needed. It's just a more win, a more win type of card. You don't need it, but if you want to, you can play it. Uh, moving on to the spells, guys. So of course we play uh, three call by. So uh, in theory, guys, card's amazing. Card has always treated me well until this weekend, decided to hide when I needed it and only showed up when the opponent had impermanence. So other than that, you must play it. It's a it's a, good, it's a card that allows you to continue to play. It allows you to play through hand traps such as Droll. Like I said, guys, Droll wreck this, wrecks this deck. It also allows you to play through Ash, Effect Veiler, Ogre, everything like that. So you must play three of it. Uh, now moving on, we're playing two Kyotos and one Terraforming. I did this because of uh, the calculated chance of you didn't want to why not play three coyotes well because if you play through two coyotes and you get a terraforming you're able to deck thin easier to get the second so the theory behind it is you open one open this you terraforming into this and then your chances of drawing a coyote when you already have it are um zero so that that's just my opinion i enjoy this ratio a lot more than playing three coyotes because multiple times happened when i opened two coyotes and it's not pleasant 
but I would like to have the effect to deck them for Saryuja. Moving on, guys. Uh, we're going to hit up the Revival spell. So I dropped Guard Dragon to 2. I was playing it at 3, but a lot of times, guys, as... Uh, What's to say? This card is good because, it, but it's bad. It's a brick, but it's good. It's a good, a good, very good card. It only interacts with Draco. So essentially, my theory behind it is, is you you should play it because it's a revival card. You are always going to somehow get to Draco unless they hand trap you. In which case, if they hand trap and you don't get Draco, it's all right because this card is just going to be dead anyway. Then, so the reason behind it is it's a monster reborn for your Draco. It allows you to move uh, columns. To make your equal max bigger, it allows you to move columns to make the two link arrows pointing to each other. It's really good, and it's that's the thing I found with the deck, is when you make your first Sarayuja, if you don't already have a dragon extender in your hand, you need to draw into one. And you essentially, you play the four collapse serpents, or you know, you're not going to play six, so the max you're going to play is five of them. Three black and two white guys. So this is a, another dragon extender that you can draw into in the form of a revival. It's also another card searchable off of a crawler. And then it's once per turn. So I don't understand. If you guys are fans of Phoenix Flare, big fan of him, I don't understand him not playing it because it is searchable. It's once per turn. Instead, he chooses to play two of these, where these are once hard once per turns. And my theory behind it is, is you want to see two in your opening hand and use two, and you want to have one to search off a crawler and one to hopefully draw into if your game goes on. But essentially, these are the revival cards. Uh... I, for a while, I thought I still do think Succession's better, in my opinion. So if I were to cut down any of the Revival cards, excuse, well, one second, guys, and Monster Reborn, if I were to cut down any of the cards, probably cut down, drop these guys. But I really, I like these guys. It's like I said, if you don't get a Dragon Extender in your first Sarajuja, you're not continuing. You're not going to make your busted board. You're going to make a mediocre board. So it's like you want to optimize your chance to draw into a Dragon Extender, which this is. And this is just also a good way to make your Equal Max bigger. So, like, once you make your Crystal Wing or whatever you guys play, you can move the Crystal Wing underneath your Equal Max, if you play Equal Max, and your Equal Max gains the attack, which makes him bigger, too. But, uh, so this, but this is still the change that I've made. I've opted to play five revival cards. I like this. I like this because no, most of the times, like I say, guys, you are going to get Draco to hand. So, I mean, it's not a dead card. It's an extender. It's a, it's a good utility card, and I do recommend playing it. Uh, then the new tech that I just, well, a new tech is a Foolish. My theory behind it is, is uh, Dump Destrudo. So essentially you're playing three Destrudos. It allows you to make Savage Dragon a lot easier, and it did. It's, it's, you're essentially playing three Destrudos. Or, or, you send a Crusade card that you want to add back off Draco. So like if you have Maximus in hand, but you want Arborea, and you didn't open Arborea, Foolish the Arborea, go through your Crusadia plays, add back the Arborea, you have, a, you have the ability to have, you have more extenders. Moving on to the final three cards, two impermanents. I would recommend playing three. I would play three. However, a hundred and some dollars is a lot to pay, and I don't plan on pushing it out at the moment. But uh, two impermanents, I would play three of these. This is a good hand trap for multiple reasons. The reasons behind it is is because it's a... Well, first off, it's a hand trap that you can play going first. It's a good negation to draw into, and most importantly is the fact that the synergy it has with uh, the sea turtle and waterfront. So, like, the... Waterfront gets counters when cards leave the field, so essentially, when you set this and you flip it, you negate something, and it goes to the graveyard, you get a counter. So that was my theory behind it, is that it allows me to fuel my own counters. That's also why I play the one crawler and equal max, because essentially, if you end on a board with the turtle, equal max, and a set of this, this right here, these two cards, well, the equal max, of course, and this right here become two more, another negate. So they just fuel your own Sarayuja without your opponent having to do anything, which is what I really really like that i like that niche interaction with the deck but uh that's it guys that's it for the deck i think it's 41 cards like i said guys personally i play three impermanents and i'd maybe cut down maybe cut down guard dragon but <laughs> other than that nothing too nothing too different moving on to the uh whoop, 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 extra deck we're still playing the two magius the one spatha this right here is the core core of your uh Guard Dragon plays. I like playing two of these. I would play three of them if I could, but no room. But essentially, you don't want to have two in case one gets answered. You have the ability to make another. You can link down. You do some pretty cool link plays with these guys, linking into certain things, using your Crusadias to link into these guys to give your uh, Sea Turtle more counters. 
But most importantly, you want to have one to establish the board. You want to have another to go into the equal max to one punch, which is, of course, you play Regulix to search the crawler. And then you want to play Nanny himself. Nani? Nani himself. Excuse me, not Nanny. Nani. Uh, he's good. He allows for majorly good pushes. He's a form of negation you can end on. He is, if you, in my opinion, it ain't a Crusadia deck unless you're playing this. Uh, in my opinion, he's better than Boral Sword, but he does the same thing Boral Sword does. He allows you to push for game, and he allows you to end on a negation with him. Also, guys, remember, a lot of people forget. They summon something to that arrow there. They can't attack either. So, that's it for the Crusadia cards. Uh, when we get the new, when Dark uh, Neostorm comes out, depending on what the ban list does, this, you know, we might we might be adding back some more dudes. I don't know. I don't know what will be, I don't know what the future holds, but stay tuned for that. I can't wait for that set. Moving on. For the guard dragons, one Pitsy, one Illipi, and one Argapane. I wouldn't play any more, any less. You could play. You could get away with playing two of these for a recovery play if they don't. If you don't kill them, but essentially, guys, uh, you know, this this is the main piece right here. This guy right here, and this guy right here gives you your negator, which is really good. Really, really solid. And then to kind of complement that, I play one triple burst. Triple burst is a really good card, actually. I really wasn't going to play this card, and then I decided to. And I'm telling you guys right now, I am not regretting it. This card is so good, <coughs> excuse me, so good because it allows you to negate certain battle phase or uh, damage step, I think it is. Once we're to, yeah, damage step cards like Ray, like uh, what's it, like an Honest and stuff like that. It's really good. It's also a good link three to go into. When you do draw, you get your first Sarayuja and you don't get those dragon extenders. So it allows you to make this, which allows you to go into your extra deck in the form, making an equal max or making a special the Gamasil from your hand. It's a really good card. I like it a lot. And uh, when you do get drolled, in, in the particular case against a Trickstar player, when I got drolled and I was left with um, Spatha and the Elipi, I made this special from hand, linked into uh, Regulex, got a Search, got an equal max with a Negate, and a Cyber's Quantum Dragon. So really good for extending your place if you do get drolled. Moving on to Skull Dread. So people, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to play two of them while we can. No ifs, ands, or buts. You, you need to play two of them. But if one does get answered, and like we do lose one, it's okay. We can still play make busted boards with just one. It just makes our busted boards kind of like, okay, so we'll make a busted board, and then we make the second series and just make it better. Now we just make a busted board. So you can play two. You need to play two while you can. You can get away with one, but I you, you have to play two while you can. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, two Skull Dread. Enjoy them while we can. Uh, for the last card, one Phoenix. I, it could be any card. I just opted to... I hate back row, so back row removal. So, guys, this guy. This guy right here was MVP of the entire event. So... This is Cyverse Quantum Dragon. This is what I decided to exchange F.A. Don Dragster for. So my theory behind it was, was if I can end on a board with two or three negates, or the turtle, and this guy, I'm pretty well against my Alter Geist and my Sky Striker matchups, which is, as you guys see, didn't play a single one of them, I'm pretty solid. So the theory behind this was ending on a bunch of negates and ending on this guy to where, okay, so they can't target my stuff with Widow Anchors, the Siliquitus, uh, Milliseek. They got to target this guy first. Okay, well, if they don't, if they don't want to target, if they can't target it, they're going to try and battle. Oh, well, you got to battle this guy. And guess what? You get to bounce a card. So it was, and it's also an in-deck theme out to the Colossus. Multiple, like, multiple Colossuses. If they establish more than one, you have the way to get rid of one while solving the other if you have the Kaijun with the, with the Sea Turtle. But uh, moving on, guys, I really like him. He is staying. I like him a lot more than uh, Don Dragster. There was uh, my BA, BA Danger matchup. The guy made Burl Sword. Switched this guy because he had to target this guy. He couldn't target anything else. Decided to attack this guy because, of course, the only thing you can attack is this guy. And I was just like, all right, bounce it back. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, bounce it back. Burl Sword went away. Next turn, switched to attack and just smoked for game. He is phenomenal. I think he'll stay in the deck. I wish he was a dragon. I wish he was a dragon really well. I wish he was a dragon, but he's not. He's a Cyverse. But he's a 7 that you can also... He's a 7, so you can make him with Destrudo. You can make him with Destrudo. You can make him with Arborea. So he's really good. Uh, Crystal Wing. I was really in theory on testing this. So essentially, guys, Crystal Wing is my choice because it can negate the dangers. It can negate the Thunder Dragon discard effects. And uh, hot, essentially, this is my Hot Red Dragon. So uh, a lot of times, my ending boards will always be an Equal Max. Well, let's say Equal Max will be right here and that'll be over here. But 
I have a negation and that. So why not end with both? So that's my that's my theory. Why why end with just a red dragon hot or a hot red dragon? We can end with like essentially a hot red dragon, a probably more likely a huge hot red dragon and a crystal wing. So he's really good. He it proved my point when I played the danger ba that I could that the ability to stop the dangers in hand are really good. Moving on to the final card. Savage Dragon. You don't have to play this guy. I know some people aren't, but I like making him. He's an Omni Negate, which means he negates everything. It allows you to use cards such as your Gamma Seal and your Equal Max freely, so then you can negate uh, the evenly, which essentially is... Which essentially you can say the same about Equal Max. You can use this and then use this to negate the evenly. So oh, that's it for the extra deck, guys. 15, of course. Moving on to the side deck. So guys, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm sorry this video is going to be long, so in the description below... I'm going, well, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, three tokens. So also, guys, take note, my side deck showed up three times yesterday. And one was when I didn't need it. So <laughs> she gave me the wrong card. So three tokens. I've probably had these tokens forever. I love them. Moving on. Uh, three twin twisters. Essentially, guys, my side deck is for going second. That was my theory, was when I was forced to go first, make unlimited gates, when going second, because who would want me to go first? I would just do the old one punch and just get rid of them. So three twin twisters. Three boots. So a lot of times boots even went in when I knew I was going first so I could hit the uh, impermanence. Well, one time I, I decided, I was my theory behind it is you sight it in when you're going first. You set it, you draw it off of Sarah Yuji, you set it, and then when it goes to your opponent's turn, you use this to hit the evenly. And yes, they do get to reset the evenly, but you should be able to kill them unless you're me and decide to mess up. So in testing, in theory, and in practice, it did well that way. Uh, for hand traps, I decided to play two Ash Blossom and two Droll. These guys, the reason I dropped the Ash Blossoms was because it, it really hindered your hand. You'd much rather open combo extenders, and I thought uh, Impermanence did enough. I wanted my hand trap to matter where these can get called by the Grave. So, again, for going second, uh, these guys are coming back, as you guys probably heard a hundred times. Hits the Danger Thunder. Really good. It also hurts me. You drop this on me after I add Draco, game over for me. I can only make a subpar board. And then... Moving on, two slumber. I didn't want to play three because I didn't want to risk opening two and or, you know bricking with them. And then we play one, two, three kaiju's. So that this essentially went anytime I went second. And then like I said against the Cosmo matchup, kaiju slumber pulled through. So that's my theory, guys. Is when going second, you take out the water fronts, put in the kaiju packages, take out your going some of your going first cards, some of the cards you don't need, and then you just go off and you one punch them. So. Uh, that's it, guys. That's it for the uh, deck profile. Uh, stay tuned. If you guys are going to watch this, I'm going to have a, a uh, combo coming up. It's pretty much for the pure Crusadia players out there because I know a lot of the pure players still watch my channel. Some of them don't like the Guard Dragon, so I do have a pure combo coming up for you. So, guys, this is Charles from Team COG signing out. Comment, like, and subscribe. Peace.